friends the weather has been fluctuating quite a bit it goes from the days being in the 70s and the nights being in the 40s down to days being in the 60s 60 degrees Fahrenheit that is and then the nights being like 39 or 37 degrees which is quite cold and I believe 35 degrees is freezing, like moderate freezing, and below that is is actually freezing, and a little above, above 35 is light frost. So that's what we're dealing with here, just really cold temperatures. Like for instance, the, the last few nights were in the 40s, like 41, 43, something like that, 45 maybe. And then last night it was 39 degrees and tonight's going to be 39 degrees Fahrenheit so it's pretty cold um, so I've been checking and I have this issue where as soon as I sow any type of seeds I feel like there is going to be some kind of sprout within you know that week which is unreasonable so I should gauge it based on things that I've grown so like over here several weeks ago if you've been following I had transplanted borage from this side of the chicken run kind of closer to this wall over here so that they're all lined up so I can have a walking path here as you can see I watered some of this stuff here so when I that day that I transplanted the borage <clears throat> I also sowed some sunflower seeds, the black oil sunflower seeds, so that way uh, there will be sunflowers for my chickens to eat the seeds. And I sowed some calendula here. Now the ground is really hard and I didn't water it very much, so who knows if the calendula is going to sprout. So looking from the outside of this enclosure into my newly sowed uh, pepper area and tomatoes in that styrofoam box over there I should be actually okay with not seeing sprouts every day but I've been checking every single day quite uh, impatient I am another thing I've been doing is I had some uh, hay that was supposed to be the chicken bedding and it got wet at the bottom side so it started to rot down so the top stuff was fairly dry so I th threw that in the chicken coop and then the bottom stuff I just stuck it over top of my garden bed to kind of mulch it and I mean I didn't have t enough material to cover everything but I just covered whatever I could and my cilantro is growing so well so what I've been doing lately is I have a ton of cat soy and uh, rhubarb chard and Swiss chard and bok choy and spinach so I've been plucking some cilantro and some cat soy and what happened was I was eating it like with noodles like ramen the way that plot 37 um, Jessie and her mom would make some noodles and throw an egg or two from their ch their hens into the the hot water and they would collect different vegetables from their garden to throw into their soup and I was like that's a great idea I didn't think of that so I um, recently have made my noodles that way and then I decided, you know what, I, I have a lot of vegetables. I, I do keep a lot of those um, sauce packets, the seasoning packets. And uh, so I have a lot of those and I decided to do a carb-free version. So I just plucked off some tatsoi. If you look here, I broke it off. Over here I broke it off. Over there, it was starting to, uh, to, um, bolt, so I plucked off the tops where it was starting to form little broccoli-looking heads, 
and I don't know if Tetsoi is in the Brassica family um, but so I've been so let's back go back to the noodle story so a carb free version is just to pluck off the leaves and different herbs such as the cilantro and um, onion tops and things like that and just put it in the hot water with the seasoning packet and not the noodles and that is pretty filling and delicious and um, so why do I have so many of the packets minus the the noodles is because sometimes we eat the noodles as if they're like chips <laughs> so we just break them and eat them and um, they they're already flavored a little bit so then we end up with a lot of seasoning packets which I save because I like the flavors because there's beef there's shrimp all kinds of stuff so um, that's what I've been doing and it's a low carb version or you can just have like chicken broth or beef broth or uh, bone broth so peeking into my styrofoam box with the tomato seedlings I don't have any green growth so far um, I did plant it I, I believe I sowed it a week and a half ago I'm not sure I've, I've forgotten I have it written down somewhere but yeah kind of disappointing so I tried to save the seeds from the previous year and I tried to scatter them everywhere so here's the calendula in a corner that I thought had died last um, fall but it's here comes um, a plant plus I believe three other plants right there so that's awesome I haven't paid any mind to this corner of my garden that has my jasmine plant and look at here it's it's so much bigger I planted this from my mom's house about two years ago and last year it was inside the pot real short and hadn't passed the rim of the plant the the pot and now it is above and beyond so I'm gonna have to stake it up unfortunately it was a very wet and very cold winter so my papaya plant that was growing right here um, it did not make it and I'm quite upset because it got really tall and I mean it's just frustrating I can never grow them but I'm starting to see how my mom does it so I might be able to manage it next year but I'll have to wait again yet another year and I my Mexican lime tree is now five five seven five eight taller than myself it used to be about three feet tall maybe and when I bought it probably two and a half feet tall and it is just bursting with tons of blooms and it made quite a few fruit last year delicious limes things are definitely waking up so here's my little baby pomegranate and it is starting to leaf out because um, if you know in the winter they lose all their leaves in the about late fall and then in the winter it just looks like these dried stems and it just looks like it's dead but it comes back so last year on clearance from Lowe's I bought this um, Gerbera daisy and I had no idea what color it was because all it was was some leafy parts and a dead shriveled up top and now I'm seeing it's this really pretty pink and white color it's really gorgeous with a yellow center I love it I love it it the bloom is kind of small so I'm hoping that maybe with some fertilizer that it'll make lots of big blooms over here it looks like a mess but basically I threw a bunch of stems here I threw a bunch of stems here from um, dead like just dead matter to cover what was the Cuban oregano it's very cold sensitive and it looks like it didn't make it because I don't see any remnants of it. Oh, there it is. So that thicker stem right there. So we'll see if it makes it or not. Um, it has some leaves. And then here's my uh, Gerbera daisy um, Jamesonii, which I also bought Clarence, and another one here. And I just stuck them in the ground, and I'm so happy that 
it's coming out real well and I love the bright cherry yellow color I'm so sad my Shizo didn't make it it's completely void of leaves um, I'm not sure if it's dead because the um, the stems are quite brittle and they break near the top but that's the sensitive parts so hopefully it'll um, it had a chance to reseed or maybe down at the base it's not dead. I'm quite thrilled. Um, many of my plants that I purchased from um, Blue Mountain Perennials, some of them have made it. So I actually have right there um, one of the perennials. That one looks dead. The Coreopsis is still alive. This is the Astilbe, I think, which is alive, thank goodness. It's got green leaves. And this other plant, um, it's the Badlia Princess. So that's alive. So, so far I'd say one, two of them are dead. And it's a perennial, so I was hoping it would live, but when I got it, it was really tiny. It was kind of late in the summer, and I don't think it had a chance by the time I transplanted it into the ground to recover and make enough leaves leaving, leafing out. So here, what is this? Um, it's missing its label. So I've got one that's alive here. This one may be dead and this one makes me sad because it's an echinacea and I really love echinaceas. So for it to be dead and the color of it was beautiful, I hope it lives. I hope it starts to sprout new leaves. Okay, I was mistaken guys. I've been going around showing you the plants but then it's disturbing me so I am also at the same time weeding the crabgrass right here. And what happened was, I was weeding and I have the names of the, some of the plants all along. So the hookah is alive, which has this beautiful neon green leafing with a cute, um, I believe it's a pink flower, gorgeous. Um, and it's the coreopsis that didn't make it. So um, it looks like it's dead dead. <laughs> And then the astilbe is the other one that's dead. And then this is, like I said, it's missing its label, so I don't know what it is. And as I was weeding, I, I had a closer look here and something purple sprouted up and I'm like, what is that? And I didn't want to pull it out. And then I happened to look carefully and then I saw the label way down here. It's a uh, purple coneflower, Echinacea purpura, and I've had several tries of trying to grow it from seed and I was not successful, but the first time I did that it was because I direct sowed it directly into the mulch, which won't work, you have to sow it into soil. <laughs> so, but ever since then, I just think I have, um, I'm just rough with plants, so I don't do a good job of growing things from seed. And here I have, well, let's find what it, what it is. Penstemon. Quartz. So I think it'll have pink flowers. And this echinacea here, which hopefully it is alive. I don't know. It's the one that's peachy colored, which was really cute. And here, alive and well, is the Budlia Princess Pink. So that one's doing great. So here's another Jamesonia uh, Gerbera. And this one I left it in the pot because I was searching for a spot to put it in and I hadn't done it. So I kept it in the pot all winter long. And it has beautiful buttery colored orangish yellow, really deep yellow flowers. Love it. I think that's the same. 
So I'm not sure what kind of animal it is. I wonder if it's a bird sitting on top of my goji berries and because they're so thin um, branches, they break because I have found several pieces of goji canes all over around the area surrounding my goji berries. So the same thing chewing on my goji berries is also chewing on my perennial that I bought. So I think it's this plant. I think it's this plant right here. Let's see the label. It is Echinacea crimson, I mean Kismet red. No, that's not it. I think it came from this one here, which is more like it. Yes, the Armeria. So I yes, now I remember. This is how Armerias look. And I love the way they look. They're really cute little blossoms. So I bought a pink one online. Um, and then this is this is after I had found out about it. And I had already bought one from Lowe's at full price. A, a purplish blue colored armeria. And something chewed. Because it was this flower was sticking up here. Right here. Real nice and everything. Really cute. And then all of a sudden it was on the ground. So something definitely has been chewing on my plants, which is frustrating. And then luckily coming back is this Veronica Giles Van Peace, I think. Then this one is <clears throat> the Veronica Aspire. So I think it's a purplish, purplish colored one. And this one is the Veronica, the same, Giles Van. They sent me several of those. I only ordered one of each because I don't like to have the redundancy in the plants um, if I don't have to because being that it was a perennial. But so this one doesn't look like it made it. And it is the, oh no, Lu the Lucanthus Shasta Daisy Sunbeam, which had really gorgeous buttery yellow colored flowers. I'm so sad it didn't make it. Oh my goodness. It's one of my favorite ones. I love it when flowers are in bloom. I stare at them every day as I pass and it's so rewarding. So this hyacinth has been blooming for several weeks. I love it. Love the color. So things are waking up. So this apple tree is starting to leaf out a tiny bit. My apricot is pretty bare, but the where the nodes are, it's starting to make little buds. Oh, I just love this. My donut peach was making buds and now it's already blossoming. It's so pretty. It's going to be pink blossoms. It's so gorgeous. This will be the first time um, that I'll have seen it blooming and, and hopefully it makes fruit. I was doing quite well here with my um, other tetzloys and Swiss chard and lettuce. And all of a sudden, while I was harvesting from the other garden bed, I see holes in my tatsoi over here. So something's going around, some kind of bug, and it's going to get decimated, so I better harvest this soon. So last year and the year before, and the year before, pr practically every single year I've been growing brassicas religiously because I love brassicas. I love... Um, Broccoli. Sorry, waiting for that plane to go by. Love broccoli, cauliflower, um, rapini, um, practically everything. Brussels sprouts, even though they're a little bit on the bitter side. I love it. And I love collard greens. Kale. Um, it's a little bit rough of uh, roughage, you know, but anyway, I love everything about it. You know, I love to stir fry it, everything um, in the cruciferous family. However, 
um, two years ago I saw this beetle, this bug, and it was on the plant and I, I thought that they were like the male version of the ladybug so I didn't think anything of it and I left it alone. And then last year I saw an explosion of the same bugs and they were all over my brassicas and I didn't know what they were and finally my husband looked it up and um, I forget the name of the bug right now but it's like black and red on the back side of it and basically what they do is sit on your your plant and they suck all the juice out of your brassicas and they decimate it and um, what's worse is that that particular plant I mean that particular bug multiplies and breeds and in one season it can make nine or nine cycles of babies so basically it'll breed so usually when you see them on your plant they'll they'll either be breeding or sucking on the plant and uh, at some point they're laying their eggs or whatnot but um, so you always see towards the end of the season you'll see the big ones and then some smaller ones medium-sized ones and smaller and smaller and smaller tiny little bugs and it's because in one season it can have like nine generations of that bug and it was so frustrating I decided not to grow brassicas this season however this plant here had been growing in this pot um, last year and I don't think the those bugs made their way over here but this is practically the only brassica I grew this year and it wasn't even on purpose it you know grew from last year so um, I'm gonna stay away from growing brassicas until I can get some kind of insect cover because it's really frustrating to grow things and not be able to get a hold of it and and the bugs decimate it before you do and the other annoying thing about it is that I tried to um, pluck off the plant and keep the beetles on it to to give to the chickens but they have this uncanny ability that when you pluck off the plant or the leaf then they'll just drop off of the plant and go down into the dirt so that it helps them to survive so like say you wash them off with water they'll just end up on the ground and they'll just climb back up and kill your plant and eat your plant so it was quite annoying and the other thing about that is that when I did actually successfully bring it to the chicken coop the to the chicken run the chickens would not eat them <laughs> they had like no um, interest in eating them so I was pointing that out to my husband and he said maybe it's because they don't taste very good and that could be true or maybe they're poisonous or something who knows <clears throat> so until I have some kind of cover like fabric then I will not be growing brassicas for at least a couple seasons because I was growing it a lot every season <clears throat> and um, so that proves that you do have to uh, you know, grow your plants in different areas and not in the same area in the same bed year after year because you're going to be attracting those pests. And another reason why I was growing a lot of brassicas besides that I love them is that I could always pluck off a piece. So for years and years I had some kale trees and I would just pluck off some or pieces of broccoli or whatnot, the leafy parts, and I would feed it to the chickens and they would love it. They would, they completely finish it off so it's a great plant for both yourself and your chickens another thing is it wasn't like I wasn't warned so that first year when I first saw it I should have immediately looked up what kind of bug it was rather than just um, you know thinking it was nothing and ignoring it and I should have researched it so I would have known the previous year not to bother to grow any brassicas or to buy the cover, the row cover sheets, uh, or insect uh, sheets, whatever you call them. So my advice to you is if you first see a bug, look it up, see what you can do. You can avoid yourself a lot of work or a lot of um, issues. You can deal with the pests immediately. 
um, rather than just <laughs> ignoring the signs, basically. A plant that I highly recommend that you purchase for your garden is a pineapple guava. I mean, I've never had issues with it. I, I bought it, didn't put it into the ground for about a year or two, and it was probably two feet tall, three feet tall. And I finally stuck it into the ground and it grew so fast the first year and now it's growing even even more and it's um, the second year it's in the ground so it's probably like four years old or five years old and it produced a lot of fruit last year and the year before unfortunately uh, last year however a squirrel or something got to it before I could but it produces a lot of fruit Another thing is it doesn't seem to have many pests that bother it and perhaps it's because um, it's not native to here. I think it's native to New Zealand and Australia um, because I know they know much more about these, the fruit and the plant than we do here and mostly people brought it over um, to plant in their landscapes because of the beautiful foliage and the plant is really um, really pretty it can be a bushy habit or you can you know cut it so that it's more tree like here is here are some peas that are growing really well I waited practically all winter for them to grow because I know they like cold weather um, they grow better because as soon as the weather heats up in the late in the mid spring or late spring in California it just burns and <laughs> it becomes it shriveled up and I'm just loving these beautiful branches that are going to be beautiful pink blossoms <laughs> 